All right. So here we have a SM420 four-speed transmission out of a one-ton 1949 GMC truck. I uh, started taking it apart to rebuild it. And um, I searched the internet, read the manual, the tr uh, truck shop manual, and it didn't seem too difficult. A lot of people were asking the same question, how hard is this thing to rebuild? Do you think I can do it? Uh, I think if you know your way around a garage and hand tools and have some basic supplies and uh, are considering doing it, you probably can do it. It's not terribly difficult, provided you have all the right tools. Um, so I'll walk through that a little bit and I'll talk about kind of some of the stuff that I ran into along the way, hopefully help some of you out there looking to do the same thing. Um, so I, I've, uh, I've already disassembled it, cleaned it up. You know, I painted everything, sandblasted. Um, but basically the disassembly was, wasn't too difficult. Uh, it's a pretty small transmission. You can probably lift it by hand. It weighs about 130 pounds, uh, fully assembled. So, um, you know, once you hoist it up onto your table or wherever you're going to be working, it won't be too bad. Uh, so basically, you start by taking the top cover off. Um, I put the shifter back in, but uh, to get it out of the truck, you have to take the shifter off. Um, there's just the bolts that hold on. You just back all those out. Uh, make sure it's in neutral so the uh, shift forks are, are not held in place uh, by any of the gears. And you just lift it right out. It comes right off. And you'll have, uh, you'll have this view of the main shaft. And um, I have not put the, what's it called, the clutch gear, they call this. This is the, this is the piece that goes into the uh, clutch. And uh, this, this um, slides into the back of the crankshaft. Uh, so this, you'll have this in here. You'll notice there's a little flat cut into that uh, synchronizer there. The manual mentions uh, index it against the counter shaft. They just mean, you know, there's a gear sticking up right there. You just want to put the flat side down so it'll go over it. You know, so this will be in here like that. And obviously there's going to be a bearing here. Um, so first step is to, uh, to get that out. And the manual says to simply tap on it while pulling, which doesn't really explain much, but fortunately for me, the original bearing was pretty loose in there. Oh, and there's, um, of course, there's the, uh, the bearing retainer is going to be on here, right? So this is going to be on here like that. Again, it's real easy. You back the bolts out, pull the thing off, scrape the gasket if you have to. I clean this all up. Uh, and you'll have the... Uh, the bearing in there, this is the new bearing with the snap ring that limits how far it can go in. So it'll look something like that. You know, it'll be in there like that. And then you're going to have, um, you're going to have this, um, I forget what this thing is called, but uh, it rests up against the bearing. It's the oil slinger. So you got like this, this big washer here that it would be in here. And then... This is two pieces here, like that, and this would go on. This will be on here already. You don't have to take it off to get it out, but that would be on here threaded down. That thread's in reverse, right? So you're going to want to, like, turn it to the right as if you're tightening it to loosen it up and get it off, and you'll need to do that to get the bearing off. Um, and you'll need a pin spanner. I had to get myself a pin spanner. Um, because you definitely don't want to try to whale on these things with like a like a drift or anything. Um, I mean, I suppose you could, but you know, you might damage it. So I picked myself up off of eBay just this. I think it's OTC Tool is the name of the manufacturer. It's actually a Toyota Cam Tool, I believe, is what it was called. It's pretty nice. It's got you can take the pins in and out. They just thread in there, so it comes with different size pins. Um, to fit it over the shaft of my transmission, you can see I had to grind it down a little bit to get it to fit. But then you just, just put it on and you get the pins to go in 
and you can take it off. So that was very handy. And I could use it for other things too, obviously. Um, but yeah, so this will all be assembled with a bearing on there. Let me just take these off. And uh, so what I did was the bearing was fairly loose in there. And what you want to do is like, as you pull the shaft, you're going to like tap, tap it with a hammer, like back and forth. And it'll kind of rock it out a little bit. And then the whole thing will, the whole thing will just lift right out. And as you're doing that, you're going to hear the needle bearings that go in here fall out. And that's that's a little bit of a scary sound. You'll hear that, and that's the point of no return. You're committed to rebuilding it at that point, or at least taking everything apart so you can retrieve those things. But um, basically, they, they line this section of the bore there, right? Um, they'll all fall out. They'll go in the bottom. You know, you're going to be taking it apart anyway, so you just fish them out later. Uh, my rebuild kit came with more uh, new ones, that is. And the way you put them back in is the instruction manual has you put some, like, heavy oil in there or some grease or assembly lube or something so they stick, and you just kind of stick them to the side, and you get them started in there. And then there's a band that goes in. Um, so you squeeze it down with some pliers, and you drop it down into that bore, and then you release it, and it holds the needle bearings in place so you can reinstall it and then once you reinstall it the shaft in there uh, will push the band out of the way up into the bore uh, the original one should be in there you have to fish it out when you take it apart but it gets kind of dropped down into that hole there and when you reinstall it the new band gets pushed uh, pushed all the way through and then the bearings you know seat themselves on top of that shaft um, First time I got this reassembled, I kind of screwed up a little, and uh, as I was pressing this gear back in, or the bearing back in, this bearing in the back, it's not, you press it in, but it's not like super, super tight, so as I was wiggling the transmission around and moving it, it kind of, it kind of loosened its way out, and it slid out a little bit. And it caused the main shaft to slide away from the clutch gear, and my needle bearings fell out. So I had to take everything out again and, and redo it. Um, and then another another screw up that I had was uh, this. Um, what's this called? The clutch cone, the synchronizer cone, or whatever. It's third fourth, the third third fourth um, shifter here. Um, it has these little clutch keys they're called you can see there's three of them you know one there one there and one there and they go all the way through to the other side of this hub you see the the inner hub has the, the splines on it and this hub presses onto the shaft so these pop out on the other side the same way and there are little springs that kind of expand up into the keys to hold them in place so you can see the spring it runs from there to here and it holds all three of them in place here's what it looks like when it's out it's very thin it's kind of like a heavy paper clip um, <clears throat> so those there's one of these on both sides of that hub that hold these things in place and they're kind of what they kind of what click this this synchronizer down and um, when I got it put back together I had everything there and uh, I, was, I was moving all the gears by hand to make sure everything was free and that I did everything right. So I was clicking this back and forth into third and fourth gear. And um, I don't know what I did. I think because I was doing it by hand, I pushed it further than it was supposed to go. And I ended up like popping off that spring and the, the keys were able to pop out of the hole there and come forward. So... Once you do that, you can't get them back in because the springs on the other side, which you can't see, but they're under this brass synchro, um, they kind of get in the way and they block you from putting them back. So this has to come out and you have to pull that, that hub off again and redo it. So that was the other time that I screwed up. I mean, fortunately, these weren't really bad screw ups. I didn't break anything. I just kind of let things fall apart. Um... I was reading on the stove vault forums about these springs, and uh, there were some guys talking about it, and they mentioned a, a part number. 
that I found a new old stock version of, which is in there now, but I don't think it's meant for this version of this transmission. Um, these keys and springs changed a little bit over the years while being used in the same transmission. And some of the guys were saying, don't mix different year uh, hubs with keys and sliders and all that. If you're going to replace something and put a different one in, use all the same ones from the same year. So I think the springs that I bought are from a different year uh, because they're kind of, they're like uh, flat uh, and these are round and the new ones are much heavier and I think they're too, they're too uh, tight because this is supposed to slide back and forward pretty easily because uh, that's what the shifter moves and I can't even I can't even get it to move so I think they're held in there too tight so I'm gonna have to take those out and put the the old ones back in there was no problem with it before it was shifting okay before um, the reason I'm rebuilding it was it's leaking you know the the seals were all shot and um, it was getting a little bit of vibration I think one of the some of the bearings were shot when I took them out, the old ones, if you spun them, they spun really freely and they almost sounded like a, like a vintage skateboard wheels where they had kind of that rattly, you know, metallic noise that they make, whereas the new ones are nice and quiet. You know, they're nice and smooth. They don't, you know, you can't really rattle them around in there. Um, so I figured I'm already taking it out. Might as well just do the whole job, right? Learn something along the way. Um, yeah, so when I reassemble this next time, I'm going to make sure I put the rear bearing retainer on like this. So I make sure that that shaft doesn't move on me and make my needle bearings fall out again. That'll be a pain. Um, but yeah, we got the main shaft. You got first gear here. Uh, all the gears are, are in really good shape. I think there's only maybe one chip on one of them. Uh, but everything's nice and solid. I mean, this thing's a tank. Uh, so you got first and second here, and the third, and then fourth is, is on the, the other shaft there. Um, I didn't take out the, the uh, reverse idler shaft. You know, that doesn't get a whole lot of use. And my kit didn't come with any bushings or replacement pieces for it, and it didn't really need them. It's nice and solid. It slides smoothly. Um, so I didn't take that out. I did take out the uh, the uh, counter shaft, which I'll do another video when I take the main shaft out. But the counter shaft comes out pretty easily. Um, you take this out first, right? So you take the, the front half of the shaft of the clutch gear out. Um, you, you have to drive this shaft forward a little bit um, to get the... Well, actually, what you can do is you, you would move this forward, right? And then that that hub fits out the back of the transmission. So you could pull this out, and then you'll get, uh, you'll get some room underneath the bearing to uh, get, like, a bearing puller. And you can pull, uh, pull the bearing off, slide it off, and then you would slide the whole shaft forward and lift it up and out. And then you'll be able to get at the counter shaft. And then for the counter shaft, all you do is these tabs will be bent up. They're, you know, keepers to help the, prevent the bolts from moving. So you would uh, bend those out of the way, back these two bolts out. This piece in the middle, it's kind of like a big thick washer that'll come off. And then you'll be able to um, kind of tap the bearing out and maybe get under there with a, like a little screwdriver or pry bar and kind of pry it back. Mine came out pretty easily. They're they're pressed in there, but they're not like super tight. So that'll come out. And then you'll be able to get that bearing off of the shaft. And inside there's a roller bearing here that that counter shaft sits in. And you just pull that out and then you lift you lift the whole thing out of there. Um, one thing to note is the instructions in the shop manual for the truck say to remove this, drive a punch through it, and pry it out. I don't recommend doing that because my rebuild kit doesn't come with another one of these. It's like a it's like a cover. It's kind of like a freeze plug or something like that. I don't know what it's called. I don't know what the part number is. None of the rebuild kits or any of the places that sell parts for these old transmissions 
seem to have them. So what I did was once I had all the, the shafts out of the transmission, I put it this side down in my press with the, the, clear, the, the opening in here, you know, close it up a little so there's room. And then from the inside, I pressed through there. I put a long, uh, uh, big socket with like a long pipe. And basically you press the, the roller bearing out at, with this cap. And the whole thing comes out. And then um, when I put the new bearing in, I press the new bearing in from this way. And then I put the cap on with some Permatex. That's what they recommend in the manual. Put, put some Permatex around the edge of the, the cap. Press it back in so it's flush. And then let it dry. And hopefully it'll... It went in nice and tight, fortunately. I was afraid it was going to be all loose after I took it out. But it's still tight. It stays in there. Maybe I'll put a little more Permatex around the outside just to be sure. Hopefully it won't leak. Um, yeah. And then when you go to put your cover back on, you want to make sure all your, your gears are in neutral, right? Because, uh, and that the shifter's in neutral, because these, these yokes need to s sit into these grooves like that. So you got to get first to sit in there, second to, sec uh, third and fourth to sit in there, and then the reverse idler uh, lever goes here. So that's this. So this goes down, let's see, I don't know, it goes like this. So there's a bolt that goes in there, and it makes it a lot easier. If you take this bolt off and take this lever out, you'll be able to get the, the shafts out, in and out a lot easier. But uh, this goes in here, and then there's a, there's like a guide that this needs to fall into. That would be... That would be that right there for reverse. You can see that goes in there and that's what actuates, throws it into reverse. So you wanna make sure that this piece is in the right place. So take a little of alignment. I haven't put the cap back on, the cover back on, but you know, it's just a matter of getting everything lined up. Um, the kit, the rebuild kit I got was from Novak Adapt. They do a lot of transmission conversions for Jeeps. Uh, a lot of the Jeep crowd like these these old things because they're crazy heavy duty and they've got the ridiculously low first gear. So Novak sells a nice kit. <clears throat> That's what this was. They have high quality bearings that came with it, new needle bearings, all the snap rings, a gasket set. Uh, there's extra parts in here because it they cover the different versions of the transmission. I guess like the half ton and three quarter ton version is a little different than the one ton. So there were some extra bearings and extra seals in here that don't apply to me. Um, so I didn't need them, but I have them. Um, and they give you a different, this is the like a lock spring that goes on the first, second gear that kind of holds it in place. They give you a new one of those and they give you a few different ones. Uh, I guess Depending on how much wear you have, you can use a thicker, thinner shim. But um, they include an instruction manual, which is nice. It's very similar to what was in the shop manual, but um, good to have. And I guess people have said good things about them having uh, good tech support if you need a call. And they do make a uh, like a modified. So I guess these old versions have. Um, they don't use a seal. They, I guess the um, the oil kind of uh, comes down this this opening, and there's like the I guess the threads there push it back in, and it drips back down in the transmission. But it can leak. Like if the truck is pointed downhill and not running, it could let a little bit oil little let a little bit of oil out. So they have the option to um, I guess you can send you send them this shaft. And they'll machine a race on it and give you a, um, a new front retainer that takes a seal. I think that's what, what one of these might be. So that way you have like a real like nice lipped seal instead of the, uh, the old style method. It's optional. You know, it's a service they offer. I think it's like, I don't know, 100, 150 bucks 
you're interested. I've never, as far as I know, had any issues with that leaking. But, um, you know, it's cool that they do that, keep these old things alive. Um, yeah, so I just sandblasted and cleaned all my pieces, got everything nice and shiny. I didn't take this apart because that's in good shape. They didn't, I think they give you a couple parts in there, like some uh, tension pins or whatever. But fortunately for me, this the shift cover is in, in good shape. I didn't have to take that apart. <clears throat> I still got to put this seal in. I haven't taken this seal out yet. But again, I'm just going to press it out, pop the new one in. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's about everything here. I'll do another video. I'll get a better shot inside. Um, oh yeah, down in the bottom, you can kind of see that, that little screw and the baffle looking thing. That's a chip collector. I guess the idea is, uh, as it slings oil around, if there's any grit or debris, it kind of gets flung down to the bottom and it stays trapped underneath that, that baffle. And, um, Man, when I cleaned it out, it was like a layer of sludge. You couldn't even see the baffle. It was just completely filled. So I got all that cleaned up. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that'll help some people. It's always nice to have, have a video of what's going on before you get into something. So uh, I don't know. Keep a lookout for my next one, and I'll update you on the progress. See ya.